Hello, and welcome to another edition of Day Drinking with Kevin. If you've ever been to the wine house in Fairfax, Virginia, you know what a big fan we are of Ancient Peaks Winery. You may have even seen Jenilyn walking around with one of those ancient fossilized seashells. Well, this weekend we had an opportunity to meet with Mike Sonor, founding winemaker at Ancient Peaks, and I want you to hear his story about how Ancient Peaks got started. Uh, last year's my 31st vintage local wine business. My wife and I got married in Burgundy, France in 1996. And uh, so it's a Cal Poly here, worked for six wineries. Started working for Art Mandavi, which is pertinent to this project in, in 1994. And then uh, in 2000, so anyway, that's who I am. A little bit of background there. That's definitely me. Uh, but this company is owned by three families, the Philipponis, the Rossies, and the Winstroms. Those three families have been long-term residents here. Uh, two of them were born near the ranch here. And um, Rob Rossi, one of the three owners, has been involved with this ranch for going on, oh gosh, over 30 years. So he was a land use advisor, his degree is, is an architect. And so he, back in the day, I'd say back in the late 90s, he was working with the ranch owners. He said, if you never get an opportunity to own the ranch, you'd love to. So that came to fruition about uh, 2000, 2001. So then he partnered up with some friends of his, Doug Filipponi and Carl Winstrom. And they together purchased the Santa Margarita Ranch. At that time, they were negotiating, negotiating, negotiating with Robert Mondavi from Napa Valley. I happened to come to this ranch back in the late 90s before it was developed with my boss. Just to look at the ranch, I was a young person, I'm yeah, a local guy. Today, they're going to go plant this vineyard there, let's go take a look at it. So I got to, it's kind of cool, it was my first really touchstone to Santa Margarita here. And so, uh, Anyway, and then, so Robert Mondavi actually planted this vineyard. It was their idea to lease the vineyard for about 36 years. Robert Mondavi left the wine business. He sold the company in 2004. 2005, the company who bought them came back to the three families and said, hey, why don't you buy this lease back? And so that's what happened in August of 2005. They bought the lease back. So to it, they had been farming on the east side of the So these guys have been farming great for a lot of years, but they never made wine before. And that's really where I ended the picture. They called me. I was down in the end of the valley as a winemaker, vineyard supervisor. I got a phone call from Doug Filipponi. He said, hey, we're going to start a project. And next thing we lived to another, we started the company together in 2006. So I think that's a little bit kind of sets the background as far as the three families on the rent. Um, this map here, I wanted to bring this up to kind of show you uh, Paso Robles. You guys, raise your hands if you've been to Paso Robles before. Okay, Kevin. So, yeah, so the, I, we're so stoked you're here. You know, it's a four and a half hour, five hour drive to get to Napa Valley. Okay, we're halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles, near the coast. At the tip of the ranch, it's 14 miles to the ocean. We're at the top of this ranch here. So here's all of Paso Robles, okay? Um, Paso Robles goes back to 1983. In 2017, we broke it down into 11 sub-AVAs. So some of those sub-AVAs, yeah, they're here. So. El Pomar District here. Here's the Creston District, okay? Um, and, yeah, I don't use it. I guess I obviously don't use this map very much. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So, basically, our district is so far south, it's not even on the map. So, <laughs> that's how far south we are. You know, in Paso Robles, there's a lot of talk about east side, west, west side, east side. We're actually down here in the south side. We're so far we're off the map, which is pretty so uh, anyway, that's kind of just as far as past. So you guys ask questions as we go. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go through and kind of hit the highlights of what I think is cool and pertinent to what we do, who we are. Uh, but you guys ask questions. That's the best way to get personal experience. Okay. So anyway, uh, California, Coast, Paso, we're down. We're the southernmost vineyard in the Appalachian of Paso Robles. In eight, which is you know, an AVA. You know what an AVA is? American Viticultural Area. And an ABA, uh, in order to have the name to an ABA, it has to have a historical significance. So, like this Templeton Gap, that's a very significant low part in the mountain, so it's nice and it's much cooler there. So for ours down south, it's called Santa Margarita Ranch because of this ranch. So, that's the next subject, is the ranch itself. That's really the story, you guys. Three families are awesome guys and, and, and wonderful families. Now we're working with some second generation. Uh, we love each other, we love what we do, but at the end of the day, the story is this ranch. We're celebrating 250 years now on this ranch in terms of some of the businesses that are still running today. Their cattle company goes back to 1774. 
been continuously run on this ranch in San Juan River County. So it's a very, very unique part of California. The ranch itself is 14,000 acres. So that, that's a pretty good land mass. About approximately the size of the island of Manhattan, if you ever walked around Manhattan. That's what the, the ranch itself. Um, it's an original Mexican land grant. So that's what I want to pay attention to this uh, map back here. So, you know, often talked about in school, or these are what's called a Homestead Act, right? The Homestead Act was, I'm not sure the space here, the size and the different ones I imagine. Um, if you could live there for five years and not leave the property, then you own the property, right? That's the Homestead Act. And all these squares you see here, or, you know, here's a 40 acre, 40, 40, here's an 80, you know, those are all homesteads, right? But the Santa Margarita Ranch is actually right here, all this space right there. So that space, and this is uh, registered in 1901. So the Santa Margarita Ranch is that big piece in the middle. So that was actually Joaquin Estrada. He had some relations with the governor of California. So how that was found, not the Homestead Act, but no, it's, I don't know, I don't know it was officially called, it's about what you know not. Wait, it's, it's who you know, not what you know. So they took two vaqueros, right, that's Spanish for cowboys, two cowboys and a long chain, and from sun up to sun down, they just leapfrog each other, and they grab this land and sun up to sun down. And that's where the Santa Margarita Ranch, Rancho was from. So, you know, it's, 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 like I said, four, right here, yeah, 14, about 14,000 acres of land. Now, right here is where we're sitting, we're right here right now, today. You are here, okay? You see this little piece right here? This town of Santa Margarita is actually in their ranch. In my travels around the world, I've never seen this. It's a public town in a private ranch. It's actually an easement to get back to the highway and you can get into town. So the town's got five rows. It's got about a thousand residences. That's it, it's done, it will never grow. Uh, Patrick Murphy at the time owned the ranch and the ranch, um, the railroads here in San Luis Obispo County ended in Atascadero, north of us, and it ended in San Luis Obispo. And nobody wanted to tackle that quest straight. Where, where'd you guys plan to, Kevin? Uh -huh. yes. No, they actually drove up, so you passed San Luis Obispo. Just outside of town, you're in this really steep hill, right? That's called the Quest de Grey. Nobody wanted to deal with that with the train, right? So Patrick Murphy came up with the idea. He said, hey, you know, up north is really happening with uh, the gold rush. And he said, why don't you, and in his main revenue stream was cattle, the same cattle company we run today, San Marino Cattle Company. So he said, why don't you put the road together on my ranch, and I'll give you free about 200 acres of land to auction off the light spots, the spots, so I can raise money, and that's exactly what happened. So every one of these pieces, we're sitting here in one of our commercial, with both sides of the street we have, there's homes here, there's businesses here, and all those were auctioned off in the 1880s. That's how the town of San Juan is for. Wow. It's kind of cool, huh? Well, thank you for that. Yeah, anyway, yeah, it sort of sets the picture of who we are and the background of it, and then we'll, we'll deep dive into viticulture, you know, and get back for some wine tasting, that sort of thing, so. Cool? Yes. Yeah. Although Ancient Peaks has an amazing tasting room, one of the coolest parts of today's experience was actually going into the vineyards with Mike so we can hear how he picks the special grapes for his wines. Identified as one of our key blocks. Uh, that's, that's a big part of what I did early on was educating ownership as far as wine making. They never had anybody in their world that made wine. They were always on the other side of the fence, right? When you're a big, you guys, they, they, we've got a thousand acres of grapes here. They also used to have a thousand acres on the east side of Paso too. So these guys are not tiny little farmers. These guys have a lot of assets and, and, and vineyard holdings. And so you're not working with, you know, a little 40 acres in front of the house. They're working with the big companies of wine. And so the big companies of wine are not going to be, you know, it's business, right? So it's mm -hmm. like, hey, how'd you like the grapes? Eh, they're okay. <laughs> you going to buy them next year? Maybe. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will. How much you sell them for? Right? It's just the dance of life. So, but when I came aboard and when we started the HBX together, we now had in-house winemaking. So that was really, I consider myself, education, and then also real estate agent. It's all about place. Yes, that's truly the passion of wine. That, we were talking a little bit on the, on the on way in right now. Why, there's no other product that you can absolutely taste without being told, if you're really good at what you do, you can smell, taste, and go, hmm, 2012, Chardonnay, Dundee Hills, made by Dumaine Jerome. And maybe you get it right, maybe you get it wrong, but a lot of times you can get it right when you're trained, right? No, nothing else does that. Wine is about time, place, and people, right? And it can't be replicated. That's what, for me, as an, in the agrarian world of agriculture, 
we share everything. This is the yeast we use, the barrel we use. I mean, this is the rootstock. I don't care because you can't replicate where you live. It doesn't happen. And so, uh, anyway, for us, it's about place, and that's and that's the passion of wine. And we've found back to my role is identifying those. We had I have an idea. Anybody with my experience could come to a, a piece of land anywhere in the world, and with some maybe some soil maps, maybe some weather his, his, historical data, and have an opinion of where your best fruit's going to come from. But you don't until you get in the bottle is when you, is the proof is in the pudding. So anyway, I, I've initially had some ideas. Hell, we've been doing this since '06 together, so. We know exactly what we like and what we don't like. And what you don't like is well, sometimes just as important because we are a sustainable or certified sustainable company. And the first rule of sustainability is making profit. <laughs> if you ain't making money, you're not living sustainable. Economically, so. socially, and, and uh, environmentally responsible. And those all come along. Yep. But you can't do the things which we're really into, but you can't do those unless you're making money. And so there, if there's areas, and there are some areas in this ranch, it's like, okay, man, grow it like you want to grow it. I didn't go by there unless ownership asks asks me, hey, Mike, could you go by and have an opinion? I'll go by there and give an opinion, maybe to a customer that's buying it from us, but I don't spend any time over there. Whereas this block here, in particular, the, the top half of this block, we love this spot. We're spending a lot of time here. So, Well, we're not going to ask Mike to share all his secrets with you, but if you'd like to try his wines, come to the wine house in Fairfax, Virginia, where we have many of them proudly on display. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to spend with us today. And uh, day drinkers, if you are in Paso Robles, you need to come to Ancient Peaks Winery. The history, the wines, the people, this is really a sense of place that you want to experience for yourself. And as a gift, we want to give you one of our Day Drinking with Kevin t-shirts here. Oh, very uh, fun. Look at this. And uh, so you can be a fellow day drinker too. Excellent, Kevin. I appreciate it. Appreciate all your support. All right. Cheers. Cheers.